What's up, friends of the internet, and welcome back to the Jube Tube. It's been a while since we've talked about this stuff, but I gave my rant about iPhone X, I gave my review of the Pixel 2 XL, and now I'm going to talk about Android versus iOS and where I land after about a month of usage back into Android. I've been an Android Oreo this whole time just as a disclosure because the Pixel 2 came with it. It is still 8.0, it is not yet 8.1, and I have 11.2 on my iPad. So I have the latest iOS as well. So I've been going back and forth just to compare the two and just give my thoughts on this. For those of you who haven't watched my previous videos, I switched to the Google Pixel 2 XL when it came out after almost 10 years of iPhone and iOS usage. So I was prepared for a pretty solid culture shock in the ecosystems of the two phones. What I found was it wasn't nearly as shocking as I remember. I had the Evo, the HTC Evo that was supposed to kill the iPhone right back in the day with the little kickstand. That was the last Android phone that I had. And that compared to even my iPod Touch at the time was a total pile of, you know what I want to say. It, it was super laggy. I mean, even the animations of swiping between screens was bad. It couldn't even handle games. I, I'm always a big game player on phones, and it could not even handle Angry Birds. That was the height of Angry Birds forever ago when it first came out. I used my iPod Touch to play that game because the Evo couldn't handle it. The phone, the big phone, could not handle it. I wasn't expecting that much of a difference, but I was pleasantly surprised with what I got. So let's dive into some of my top categories. Again, this is this is totally me, you know, biased on what I think is important in a phone as a daily user of pretty much everything. And I'm going to go into some of the things that I like and dislike and kind of give a who wins that out for me and kind of give a, eh, a semi-final verdict at the end to kind of let you guys know where I stand after using this phone for about a month. The logical place to start for me is ecosystem. When I'm talking ecosystem, I'm not talking just the phone, but the outreach of the two systems. So Apple has iCloud and you know all their things. I can't even remember them. So now you know where I stand with that. One of the things that I was excited to make the change for was to get a Google phone because I used Google for everything. Apple was pretty late to the game and they're playing a lot of catch up in my opinion for all of these cloud services and all these things that they want to provide, whether it's photos, whether it's documents, whether it's anything, I used Google for all of it. That, that was an easy switch for me. Google wins that out. Android wins that out, hands down. The rest of the ecosystem is navigating or really interacting with the phone itself and how you do basic things. One of the things I think Android does way better is notifications. Whether it's the always on screen that tells me time and stacks the notifications underneath so I can just look at my phone rather than having to wake it up to know what's going on, or how they organize notifications when you get a lot of them and they're grouped together and you can scroll and the little icon collects and it's a much better experience. Apple still to this day in their iOS keynotes tries to boast about their notifications. I honestly didn't know that it was broken until I went to Android and then realized how just messy their notifications are. So Android wins that out for me as well. Let's get back to navigation a little bit. I kind of mentioned that. One thing I think iOS wins here is navigating around their different applications. Now, don't get me wrong. I like having the button on the back, the fingerprint sensor, and they also use it that you can scroll with it. So that's really nice. So you get a little bit more usage out of it. I like having that on the back of the phone, but the tray at the bottom, I'm getting used to. I don't love it. It was causing issues initially with the Pixel 2 XL with potential burn-in. So if that just didn't exist, that wouldn't be a problem. And um, one thing that I thought was just something every app had and was part of every ecosystem and not just iOS was gestures. I have found barely any navigation gestures in Android and that honestly is a big downfall for me that I constantly have to go over and hit the back button, pull up the tray, hit the back button. Oh, I gotta hit the back button. I can't just swipe, I can't navigate through my stuff that way. And that really bugs me for some reason. It's really minor I think and I've gotten used to now using the tray to navigate through my stuff but I've got to say, that's that's a downfall. iOS wins navigation for sure. Let's stay on the topic of the tray and talk about closing apps. So closing apps in iOS, we all know if you've got a lot of apps open, uh, sucks. It sucks. I mean, you, you try to use two fingers and, and, and get two apps out of there if you can, maybe three, and 
oh, on the iPad, can I get all four off of there? It sucks. In Android, I can just swipe to the top really quickly and hit clear all and be done with my day. Why a clear all option does not exist is ridiculous to me in iOS. Again, living in iOS forever, I didn't know it was broken. You know what I mean? I was just like, oh, this is how you close apps until I was like, wow, seriously? You don't have a clear all. That's a basic feature. Android wins that. All right, let's move on from how you interact and cloud services in that ecosystem. And let's talk about apps for a second. I told you guys earlier in the video that I play a lot of games. So on my iOS devices, I have a lot of games. I fill my time with them. You know, if I've got to wait somewhere, DMV or elsewhere, or I'm waiting to get lunch or waiting for really anything, I like to have games. I like to have something to do on my phone. I, I read, I catch up on my stuff, but I like games. The App Store is a big, big part of that in iOS. And they just redid the App Store and I like it even more than the previous App Store. And I've gotta say, the App Store in Android is bad. It is bad. I don't find anything anymore. I don't care about anything they're presenting me. They're not doing it in a way that gets me interested. For some reason, I am completely disengaged with the App Store on Android. It doesn't even come down to games. Games is a big part of that because that's how I discovered things and found new games and then I would tell my friends who liked mobile games stuff to check out and then we could compete against each other and, and that was fun. I'm not looking for games. The other thing, I just like having apps. I always get the biggest phone because I just stuff it with apps and I try to just do as many as I can throughout a day to, to make my day better, organize my stuff. I like to organize things and I love trying out new apps. I don't care anymore. Um, I, I, I don't want to be in that app store ever. I check my updates. And that's it. I don't like it. It's, it's a big downfall for me that the Google play store is not a place I ever want to be again. It's just, I don't, I don't like it. Let's talk about a few more things that I use all the time. And it's kind of swaying my vote here. Messaging, text messages, something very basic. I don't like it on Android. I don't. You... I don't know really what to say here, but pick an app. Pick one. On my Android phone alone, I think there's three different messaging apps. Pick one. Just do, just do one. If I have to get a second one, let me get the second one. Why why you ship it with multiples? That's confusing and that's dumb. And you know I'm not going to use the Verizon one. You know I'm not going to use the Verizon one. Just give me the standard one. I don't understand. On top of that, a big big win for iMessage is I can use it on my computer. I can't use it on my computer now. I can't text message people on my computer anymore. That's, that's a huge downfall and that really, really sucks. Now, you're gonna sit there and you're gonna tell me, use Google Hangouts or use Allo or use some other app. All right, there you go. More messaging apps. That sucks. I don't wanna get more messaging apps. The people I message all the time were on iMessage and it didn't matter. And it sent them a text message if they were on Android. Like, it was fine. I didn't have to have multiple apps to do it. But now, if I want to message someone on my computer, I've got to use Hangouts. I've got to use Allo. I've got to use these other third-party apps that will create a second or third conversation for the person I'm trying to talk to. So now it becomes inconvenient for them. You see what I mean? So now it's not even a problem for me. It's a problem for everybody I'm trying to message. I've made it convenient for me, but I've made their life difficult. Like, that's just dumb. Messaging is dumb. Like... It's a big downfall. I do not like it, Sam I am. I just, it's, I don't like it. One thing you can do in messages that's neat, neat, but as far as it goes, is you can customize the color of the conversation. So if you're in a group message, it kind of helps draw out who's saying what. Customization is a whole other monster here that is a double-edged sword. Customization is nice. One of the things that iOS really doesn't allow you to do at all is customize anything besides your screen that loads in your widgets, you can't really customize much of anything besides your ringtone. With Android, I can customize even where my apps lay. So I've got multiple home screens and I just stack them on the right in that little hot zone where my thumb can actually reach versus them shoving right to the top. I don't like that. So I like the fact that I can put it in a place that I can reach with one hand at all times. That's nice. The widgets, there are a lot of them. Many of them, in my opinion, shouldn't even exist but there are a lot of widgets. For some things, that is nice. The downfall of Android 
one that I will try to not find myself in, is there is too much customization. I know, you know, iOS has none, Android has too much. Android has enough for me to make it enjoyable. I can customize my phone and, and make it me, make it a way that I like, customize the messages, customize the app layout, customize the groupings, customize this, that, and the other. I get that, I like that. However, you can customize pretty much everything to the extent of making your phone a design disaster. The Google Pixel especially ships with material design kind of stuff. I myself favor that. I favor Google's design language. And if you give a user too much freedom, they're gonna take that beautiful ecosystem that you built of aesthetics and just ruin it. Whether it's a custom launcher with custom icons or all these things that a kid in college created these icons and put so many gradients on them. Yeah, I don't, I don't want that. And you should take it away. Just kidding, but seriously. It can get pretty nasty. But I will say, the amount of customization that I've done for this phone is actually really nice, and Android obviously wins that. Last thing is, I actually find that I use my Google Assistant far more than I ever used Siri. Now, Siri gets better over time, I understand that, but most of the time I felt myself getting into a heated battle with her and us not talking for days. She just always used to make me mad. We had an on and off again relationship. It's, it's just the way it was. But with Google Assistant, I find myself using it a little bit more. Also, with the Google Pixel squeeze in the phone, you get used to it. It's kind of neat. I even have the pressure up a little bit, and I accidentally activate it a lot, but mm, that's neither here nor there. I find the Google Assistant to be far more helpful with the questions that I'm asking with anything else. I don't know. It's just it's plugged into so much because it's Google. I find my answers to be better. And my son likes to use it because he's super into dinosaurs, so he can just ask it about dinosaurs and they have like a conversation. And it's kind of creepy. But it's neat, you know? Because I can't pronounce half those dinosaurs that he thinks are awesome, but Google Assistant can. Siri can too. I know. Blah, blah, blah. But Assistant overall, I believe that Google still wins that battle. Siri, Siri makes a good run for it, but Google Assistant, Android wins that battle. I'm gonna cap it there. There are a lot of other things that I wanna talk about, but those are the things I usually interact with or at least have some contact with once a day or once every other day. So it's things that I'm constantly having to evaluate and the things that I had to learn when getting this new phone. Let's get to the final verdict. Where do I lie with who wins what here? And honestly, it's a huge toss up. It's really hard to pick. I, I really don't know here. I will say this, again, the learning curve, the culture shock of changing ecosystems, going to Android after so long was nice. It was not hard, it was not scary, it didn't hold me up from doing anything. That speaks volumes, I think, for how far Android has come. It's been many, many years, I understand that, but I, I enjoy it, I like Android. I like iOS, I really do, but with Apple's track record in the past year or so, I'm, I'm, st I'm liking it less and less, I'll say that. I'm more so being wowed less and less. Let's say this, the stability, the functionality, and the rigidness of iOS works heavily in its favor. And that makes me lean very slightly still to iOS. And it's the stability, it's the apps, it's the messaging, it's the basic things that iOS does better than Android that makes me sit at a 60-40 split. I still really like Android. I still really like my Pixel. I don't regret my decision at all, but I am glad I still have the iPad to have that interaction with iOS and I didn't drop it cold turkey because I still enjoy that mobile system so very much. So, yeah. I kind of have buyer's remorse by even saying that because I don't dislike Android. I, I want to make that very clear. I enjoy it, but I still lean to iOS for now. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this week's video. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below if you've made the switch recently or if you've always been Android, if you've always been iOS. Let me know what you think. I love to talk with you guys about it. Hit that little red subscribe button or the little cartoon me wherever he's at over here. Share it with your friends, guys. I appreciate you, and I'll see you all again next time.